Two weeks ago, I made the following statement. If you can isolate children and train them to believe that there is a wall of separation between God and government, then you can enslave them, or rather, they will have enslaved themselves. Now juxtapose that thought with this. You can't subjugate and enslave a biblically literate Christian people. A Christian culture will recognize and reject tyranny before tyranny can get a foothold. A Christian people, by virtue of their understanding of God's creation, their knowledge of history, their comprehension of the divine origin of law, and their assurance of heavenly citizenship, will never suffer earthly leaders who do not speak and act lawfully. A self-governed Christian people would not allow those who mock law and justice to lead them. In order, therefore, to subjugate a Christian people, you must first de-Christianize them. You must remove from the culture that which prevents you from conquering them. And piece by piece, Christian beliefs must be removed along with the memory of those beliefs from the minds of the people. This will take time, and has, through successful compulsory public education. This is the system of education we currently know as government schools, and this institution was designed to destabilize and, in time, destroy the moral fabric of America. This process was begun in the 1840s by men like Robert Owen and Horace Mann, and later continued by Robert Dale Owen and John Dewey. These men, by their own admission, were socialists and communists who realized that the best way to subvert and destroy Christian America was to train America's children to disrespect their parents, and most importantly, their parents' values and beliefs and traditions. Beneath its vacuous rhetoric purporting to care about the kids, this appears to be the same and current mission of the National Education Association. Remember, just because you have an education doesn't mean anything if you are educated the wrong way. Declaration signer and founding father Dr. Benjamin Rush, also known as the father of public schools, said, The only foundation for a useful education in a republic is to be laid in religion. Without this there can be no virtue, and without virtue there can be no liberty, and liberty is the object and life of all republican governments. The Northwest Ordinance, first enacted in 1787 and then reenacted in 1789 by Congress and signed by President Washington, stated, Religion, morality, and knowledge being necessary to good government and the happiness of mankind, schools and means of education shall forever be encouraged. Scripture is very clear that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So, it's no wonder that Christianity and her moral codes were and should remain the backbone of our education system. Since the 1850s, this public, government-run school system has become more and more entrenched and more and more expensive. Of course, no amount of money stolen from taxpayers to finance the secular conditioning of their children's minds can have any effect but to destroy the culture and the country. I agree with Dr. Rush. Without religion, I believe that learning does real mischief to the morals and principles of mankind. Unless and until education is done God's way under the influence, control, and jurisdiction of the family, there is no hope for any improvement. This is Jake McCauley with the Institute on the Constitution, bringing you the American view.